Creating a digital course business means that the bulk of your revenue comes from one or two digital courses that you've created and you've refined over time and you've launched them over and over again. Typically, I encourage my students to start with a live launch about twice or three times and then move into evergreen, which means everything is in automation, which is the holy grail, and I highly recommend it and teach my students how to do so. Welcome to the Online Genius Podcast, where host and renegade thinking beer brewing lawyer turned online entrepreneur Bobby Klink proves that building and protecting your online genius doesn't have to be rocket science. Bobby and his expert guests break down online marketing and the legal stuff so you can stop sweating the small stuff and get back to building your amazing business. Now, here's your host, Bobby Klink. Hey there. Welcome to episode 92 of the Online Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Clank, and I got to be honest with you, this is an episode that I am really excited about, and I'm excited about it because I have a guest, and it is my friend, but also my mentor, Amy Porterfield. And she was on the show once before, way back on episode 23. And when she was on the show before, she came on because candidly, I had won a a contest inside one of her groups. And I asked her if rather than doing a a 30 minute or an hour long, I don't remember how long it was supposed to be one-on-one session, if she'd come onto my podcast. And she agreed because she was gracious. And that's the kind of a person and entrepreneur that Amy Porterfield is. That was way back in like March or April of 2018 when my business was in its infancy, honestly. My business has changed in so many ways since then, and it has changed largely because I chose Amy to be my mentor. I learn things from her every single day. Often it's things like just watching how she and her team do business. She also has great content. I listen to her podcast, the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I have access. I'm in all of her courses. I've consumed all of that content, and it is all fantastic. But also, candidly, like I said, Just modeling how I do business after the way Amy does business and watching how she treats her community. When you hear me talk about the fans framework that I use, where I put my fans first, where I take time to connect with my fans, where I nurture, where I do all of those things and don't treat people just as a transaction. Look, I I think some of that was maybe, you know, naturally something that I would have known but I also have modeled the way I've seen Amy do business. And so it is an honor for me to have her on my show again because she honestly has changed my life and my business in so many ways. I tell her that constantly, but there is honestly no way I could thank her enough for the impact she's had on my life. But In today's episode, it's not me just thanking her doing that. We're going to actually talk about, and we did talk about in this interview, her real specialty, her sweet spot, the stuff that she knocks out of the park. And that's creating online courses or digital courses, but not just courses, creating a business around her course. That's the kind of thing that she does. She's been doing it for, I think, over a decade now. She's had, I think, eight or nine courses. She has made multiple, multiple millions of dollars. It's into the eight figures now on online courses. And she teaches other online entrepreneurs how to create courses. So this really is her specialty, her sweet spot. So she came on and we talk about a lot of great stuff. She gives a lot of great tips like, you know, who is a course right for uh, what, you know, what do you need to have in place before you create a course? How do you pick the topic? How do you pick what kind of course you create? All the nitty gritty stuff that I think trips up a lot of people. We go through all of it and it is a great episode because Amy is such a great teacher. So that's what we've got in store in today's episode. But before we jump in... Amy is actually going to be launching her course, Digital Course Academy, coming in September. Now, I got the privilege of being an ambassador, basically one of her handpicked folks to help kind of coach people through and answer questions the last time she ran the course, and I'm going to be doing it again this time. But she's going to be launching the course, and I know that a lot of people think about creating courses but aren't always sure whether they want to or not. So 
I've actually set up a special Facebook group that is for people who are thinking about maybe creating a course and might be thinking about joining Amy's Digital Course Academy when it launches in September. And if you'd like me to, like to join me in there, you can do so absolutely free by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. Again, youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. Now, besides just kind of answering questions and, and helping people understand what's in DCA, you know, how will it help them? What, how might it work, et cetera, giving them kind of the, the backstage pass from an ambassador and someone who's gone through it. I also am doing some kind of business building boot camps in there because I know that people can really benefit if they're going to set up an online course by having the foundations right. So there is a boot camp that's about list building. There's a boot camp as this episode is going live will be in the second boot camp, which is about content strategy. But just so you know, all of them are saved. If you join the group, you get in there and you can kind of go through it and and get all of this stuff in place to set the foundations. Whether you start a course or not, these are foundations that will actually help your business. So again, I'd love for you to join me. You can do so by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. Now with that, here's my interview of my friend and mentor, Amy Porterfield. Welcome back to the show, Amy. I am so excited you're here and going to be talking about creating an online course for people. Bobby, I am so excited to be here. You know, I'm a huge fan of yours and I love your energy and I love how we have so much fun together. So this is going to be a good episode for sure. Yeah, for, for listeners, you know, Amy was a guest on way back on episode 23. and Feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, Amy had no idea that at that point, I think... I think my average weekly downloads were somewhere around 50, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but she came on because I won an engagement contest in, in one of her programs. And she was, so she was nice enough to do it. And That's right. things have changed a little bit in my business. I feel then. like dramatically in your business, your business is skyrocketing and the direction you're taking is so perfect for what you know and what your audience needs. So I love watching it grow and change and it's so good. Yeah, but so uh, I am. Uh, my business has changed, but also the funny thing is, your business has changed because at yeah. the time, you know, at the time that we did that, I think you thought your next signature course was going to be a course about creating systems. Yes, but you changed. You pivoted since then, right? I have. We we have the course on systems, but it's an extra special bonus. And so you have to kind of jump through a few hoops to, to find it and get it, which is by design. But we have really doubled down and focused on digital courses and like put our main focus there. And it feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to be talk about today, which I am excited for. And I was honored that you asked me to be an ambassador in your program, oh, yeah. asked me to do it again, which I, I, you know, I think, you know, I told you I would have done it no matter what, because I mean, I'm in your groups three hours a day, no matter what. So why not? But so uh, good. It, it is a pleasure. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in to talk about online courses. And I want to start with just kind of a very you know high level question. Who should create an online course? Who is it right for? And are there people that it's not right for? Oh, I love starting here. So if you have a skill set or knowledge in a specific area or expertise or experience with a transformation, you can create a digital course, which means everybody who has an online business can create a digital course. Now, the question is, do you want to? And is this the direction you want to go? So I'm not saying everybody should do it, but as long as you have something to bring to the table. And I know we'll get into this a little bit more, but if you have had a transformation for yourself or for your clients, and you're a little bit ahead of those you want to teach, you can have a digital course. Now, if we look at it more holistically in the whole, like we look at your online business or your business, even if you have a brick and mortar and you're thinking you want to move online, if you're wondering if you should create a digital course, I want to talk just briefly about what it could look like in your business. Now, although I'm biased, this bias comes with a lot of experience, a lot of trial and error. I believe a digital course in your business and having a digital course business model gives you absolute freedom 
in order to build the kind of impact and lifestyle and profits that you want in your business. It's one of the easiest way to bring in consistent revenue. So if you're struggling with your business, if you're not sure how you're going to pay the bills in a few months, if you hate one-on-one client work, if you're struggling to make things click, thinking about a digital course that you can create one asset in your business and promote it over and over again is really a different kind of business. And it's really exciting to see all the possibilities. I believe the sky's the limit. So that's just kind of a big picture of who might be right for a digital course. Yeah. And, and I, I love what you said there because one of the things I, I, I really preach to people is you've got to have some kind of scalable business model because Otherwise, you are on a hamster wheel or a treadmill. And I experienced that in my, in my law firm business. Like you, you get busy, so you stop marketing. And then all of a sudden, you're not busy. And then you're like, uh-oh, what am I going to do? So you need to find a way to stop trading hours for dollars. And so courses, look, for most people, I think a course is the, the easiest and quickest way to do it. There are some other ways, like a membership site. But I think, and I'm with you on this, for most entrepreneurs, a course is going to be the best answer. For sure. I, uh, I'm definitely behind that. But one thing that, that I think you hear a lot of is that I think a lot of people think, okay, that's great for entrepreneurs who serve other entrepreneurs. Like you and I, we both serve other entrepreneurs. And so a lot of people think, of course, is really just for people in the making money online space. And how do you respond to that? Uh, I, I'm so glad you brought this up. So when people are a little bit weary of what I teach, if they if they want to f- poke holes in it, the first thing they'll do is say, well, Amy, you teach people how to make money. You teach marketing. So of course your digital course is going to sell well, but I'm not in that space. So who's going to buy a digital course for me? And so when I hear that, all I want to do is just talk about all the success stories that have come out of my programs around digital courses, because so many of them are not related to making money or marketing or building a business. And so I'm always really excited to to talk about that. So I thought, you know, why don't we talk about one right now? And it's funny because you and I have a connection with this one in a weird way. So Bobby sent me a message about a week ago and he said, Hey, Amy, did you see this success story in your private Facebook group? And I hadn't seen it. It just whizzed by. I would have never seen it if he didn't bring it up to me. So I clicked on the link and a woman in my Facebook group had posted. And the first thing I saw was a picture of her and she was holding a caramel apple, a big red shiny, like the kind you get at the fair when you're a kid, this beautiful caramel apple. And she was holding it. And I thought, what the heck is this? And then I started to read it. And her name is Denira. And I read more about it. And she had created a digital course the first time ever. She had never done this to teach people how to make caramel apples. And so that's what her entire course was about. It was $200 and she sold 313 of them, 313 units, how to create caramel apples. And so she made over $60,000 with her first digital course. When I see stories like that, That's when I get excited because I know to my core that digital courses come in all shapes and sizes, all different price points, all different experience levels. If somebody wants to know how to do it from start to finish, you can sell a course to to teach them how. Yeah. And we actually have a, a mutual student named Melanie. She is, she was part of your digital course Academy. And then she's in my fans first society. And she just recently launched a course about gluten and dairy free baking and was blown away. She's very happy with, with her results. And now she has this asset that she gets to keep selling over and over again. And, and her question is, Hey, let's scale it. And I said, let's, that's awesome. Let's do it. So. Oh, I'm so excited. That's yeah. awesome. And again, I think a lot of people hear this and, and candidly, look, you have to market things differently, but all you have to find is that someone wants something. If there are people out there who want what you can teach them, you can sell a course. Is that a it, fair statement? It is. And then there will be somebody who will say, but Amy, you can find how to, let's say, create a caramel apple. I keep saying create because I don't cook. So I, I should say make. You yeah. <laughs> make a caramel apple online. You can go on YouTube and find that for free. Or you can go on YouTube and find some free tips about gluten and dairy-free baking. 
And you're right. Everything people want to do, you can find something about it online for free. But here's why people paid Danira and our student Melanie for their digital courses. One, they want to learn from somebody who has gone before them and has some experience behind it so that they're not learning from somebody that they have no idea if this person has been successful in this area or not. So you being the expert, you don't have to be the all knowing, but you know how to do what you teach. That holds a lot of clout. In addition to that, people pay for courses because they want to know how to get from point A to point B as fast as humanly possible. Take out the fluff, give me the roadmap. I don't want to click this video and that video and this video and go down the Google abyss where I'm now it's 2 a.m. and I'm watching cat videos and I started out watching gluten-free baking videos. Like that's (laughs) what happens. And so we are looking for people that want efficiency and want to get it done and want to learn from the expert. That's why it's so important that you position yourself as the expert. That's why posting on social media and writing your blog posts becomes so important. You're building up your clout behind that expertise so people start to look for you. Yeah, and and also I'll tell you, I I bet that for a lot of people, their audience comes from people who tried to do it themselves or tried to go on YouTube and find stuff and then failed. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I can tell my own story about that. And I think, yeah, I mean, Amy has heard this story in some sense before. When I first really went all in on entrepreneurship, I decided I was going to create a course. And I knew about Amy, but I didn't buy her course. And I ended up, I was like, I can figure out how to make a course on my own. I did. I spent $11,626 on Facebook ads, plus Facebook ads manager, plus Click Funnels and other software. And right. I sold exactly one. And she asked for a refund on day 29. Oh, gosh, it breaks my heart, Bobby. (laughs) Yeah. And and so, I mean, that's the thing. So what I'll tell you, what I'll tell you listeners is like, in some sense, if I hadn't gone through that, I might not have been ready. Right. That's what convinced me, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to go to experts now and and I'm going to be willing to invest in myself uh, by learning from people who know what they do. So I think that is a fear a lot of people have, but your customers, your clients, they're the people who are willing to pay for these things. So I think that is great advice, Amy. Yeah, for sure. But I do want to talk about a question about when people are ready. And my audience is a lot like yours. There are quite a few people who are in the very, very early stages of creating a business. And so a lot of them actually, when I posted in my group asking, what would you want to ask, said, okay, when do I know that I'm ready to create a course? In other words, like, what do I need to have in place before I decide to launch a course? Okay. So first of all, you want to make sure that you know what your business is all about. Like, what do you want to do in your business? So if you're at a place that you're thinking, you know, I might want to teach gluten-free baking, but I also could teach people how to get their toddler to sleep at night. Like if you're that far off in terms of I could teach this or that, or I don't know what I want my business to be, I'd probably hold off from creating a course until you know, you have a good sense of what your business is going to be about. And so most people are at a stage when they create a course that they're pretty clear, you know what, I, I want to teach gluten-free baking or I want to teach wellness and maybe gluten-free baking is one aspect of that. That's typically when people are ready. They have the overall understanding of what their business is going to be about. The other thing is that they have been creating a little content around this topic. They might have a few blog posts about it or a few podcast episodes. So they've started to create a little content around it just to kind of get it uh, out of their head and into the world to see how people respond to it. Another area that is important is list building. Now, this is a topic that some people start to moan about the minute I bring up. And Bobby, you and I are huge advocates of the importance of growing an email list. I I know what it's done for my business and I've seen what it's done for yours, like fully transformed it because you've gotten fully behind the importance of email marketing. So growing an email list is important and you can start out really simple. So I tell my students, When you have about 250 people on your email list, you're ready to create a course. And you might think 250, that feels so small. That's not a lot of people. 
Well, let's invite all 250 people over to your house tonight and put them in your kitchen. And you tell me if that's not a lot of people. You've got to remember that these are human beings behind those names and emails. And 250 people will give you a good sense of what they want and what they need. And you can email them questions and they respond. And it's pretty a pretty beautiful thing. So 250 people on your email list is the rough benchmark that I typically give my students to say, once you have that, we're ready and off to the races to create a course. Yeah. And a lot of people ask, so when I put the question out to my group, email was one of the issues. And then also people were asking about things like, do I need a a website? Do I need regular content? Which I think you talked about that one too, but is there any other infrastructure that people need to have in place before they say, Hey, I'm ready to launch a course? I think a website is good. Nothing fancy. I I often tease that I built a multi-million dollar business on a very ugly, simple website. Now it's a little prettier, but years ago it was not. And so a simple website, and typically the reason I say 250 people or more on your email list is when you're growing your email list, you likely have a simple website to go with that so that you can send people to your website when they click on your emails. In addition to that, you don't have to have a hundred blog posts out there. Most people that I work with to create a course, they're not yet blogging regularly. They're, if they have a podcast, they're not doing it weekly yet. I talk a lot about that with my students and get them in the rhythm of creating consistent content. So they're not, a lot of my students who create a course are not incredibly skilled in online marketing. They're likely just starting out and they know that if I have a digital course, it will put me on the map. It will let people know what I'm known for. It will build my presence online. And so there are a lot of beginners, but they've gotten a few things like a website and an email system up and running so that they can then move on to the digital course. Yeah. And I think that's that's great advice. And look, you and I, we will tell people, we, we both tell our students, you need to create re- uh, valuable regular content every week. You need to get in that practice. So, so if you're not doing that, listener, start doing that now. And yes. Constantly build your email list. And here's the other part. You need to email them every single week. When you put out content, tell them, here's my content and hopefully make it more, you know, something that they really want to open. Because that is a practice that is hugely important. So I love that you teach your students that because it, it really is the core of what I believe too. Definitely. Now, so we talked about when people are ready. The next thing I think a lot of people try to figure out is the topic. And I think there are two different categories of people here. There are some people who don't have any ideas. And then there may be people like maybe me, who my problem is I've got 857 different (laughs) ideas for a course. So how does someone, I mean, how should people go about picking a topic for a course? I'm so jealous that you come up with tons of ideas. I'm on the other spectrum that I've never been the type of entrepreneur that is brimming with 100 ideas. And so you and I are totally at different ends and that's okay because I have some very tried and true strategies to create topics for digital courses that will be really profitable. So first of all, I'm going to actually give you one of the strategies and then we can tell people about where to find more strategies for free. But before we do that, I want to back up and just say that when you are creating a digital course, there are four things you want to think about in terms of your topic in order to get that course creation sweet spot. So the first thing is your skills and know-how. Believe me, everybody has a course in them. So there's something that you know how to do that other people would love to know how to do the way you do it. So skills and know-how, definitely we all come to the table with that. Also, you want to know a little bit about your audience's struggles and challenges. So once you say, let's take our example of Melanie, she, if she teaches wellness, let's say, and then she wants to learn more about our audience, they start saying, well, I want to be gluten-free, but I have no idea how to make that happen in my life. Like I want to cook at home. I don't want to order out and go to restaurants, but I don't know what to do. So when she starts hearing this struggle, she thinks, oh, they need some really practical, easy tips to cook at home in terms of staying gluten-free. So she starts to learn about the struggles of her audience and uh, listen more than she talks. And she hears what they need. Right away, your audience will tell you the type of course they want you to create. Now, from there, you also need to to think about, well, what will people pay for? So if there's books about the topic, if there are other courses about the topic, 
if there are apps that teach people how to do something, typically those are good signs that people will pay for this. And then from there, and this is something that most people don't talk about, but I really think it's important. What lights you up? I don't want you creating a course around a topic that you're dreading to talk about or you don't love to teach. So you have to get excited about it. You don't, it doesn't have to be your passion. I still don't know what my passion is in this world. So I don't subscribe to having to know what your passion is, but it has to be a topic you're very interested in and you would like to talk about it. So again, it's your skills and know how, your audience's struggles. The profit potential, will people pay for it, and what lights you up. That is your course creation sweet spot. So once you're aware of that, that helps a little. Well, so Amy, and I have to say, I loved the last one there. I actually did a live two days ago about it because I know that that's part of what you teach because you may not know this, but I have seven core beliefs that are the core of my membership site, but also basically how I view that we should be doing business. Oh, will you tell me? Yeah, well, the very first one is business should be fun. Yes. One thing that I found is when you're having fun doing something, you're going to do it. You're going to show up and do the work. And what I tell people is literally in my online business, I wake up every day and I mean, I'm not going to tell you there aren't hard days, but most days I feel like I'm going to hang out with friends. And when that's what you're doing, you're going to do it. And that I think is a key to success. So that's one of my core beliefs. So I loved that that was that you talk about that. And so I did that. And you have a great freebie for people called the Ultimate Course Creation Starter Kit. Did I give the name right? Yep. Okay. Listeners, I encourage you to go get that. You can uh, put a, get a copy. I put a pretty link, youronlinegenius.com forward slash starter kit. Again, youronlinegenius.com forward slash starter kit. It talks about this method that Amy did, but a lot of other stuff. I think you give, what, seven ways to pick the right topic? I don't remember how many, but there's a lot in there. I do. I give away seven, and I'll give you a little hint about one of them. The second strategy I'm going to give you in the starter kit is called the magic wand question. And there's a very specific question that you can post on social media. You can put in an email and email your small email list, even if it's 10 people. You can make a Facebook Live or an Instagram story and actually ask this magic wand question. And your audience, no matter how big or small, they will tell you what they want from you. So if you get the starter kit, go to question number two and get the magic wand question. I actually give you three examples of how to frame it for your own niche. This is the one that will get you really kickstarted so you can start thinking of your course topic. Yeah, and listeners, if you haven't already, definitely go check out episode 88 of the podcast. That's where I talked about how to truly understand your audience. And if you kind of apply what Amy teaches on top of that, you will be golden. Uh, Amy, as an aside, people thought I was taking shots at people because I said, let's not do the silly ICA work where I basically said, I don't care what my ICA's hair color is. <laughs> right. But, I, I agree. I get right. it. You know, and I guess my point is, I don't care if you if you pick the eye color and the hair color. My point is, that's not the real work. The real work is is really understanding the thoughts in their head and And your magic wand question is a really good way to get at that. So um, I definitely suggest that. And how about for multi-passionate entrepreneurs who go through this process and come up, like even after the process, let's say they come up with 10 ideas, how do they decide which one to create first? Oh, so good. So let's say you have 10 ideas. From there, I take you through, and I I do this in the starter kit, but I'm going to give you a few uh, little tips so you can can take action right away. Let's say you're like Bobby, where you've got tons of ideas and you're brimming with it, which I'm jealous, so good for you. But from there, you could do some crowdsourcing where let's say you take your two or three top most favorite ideas and you have your audience vote. You could do an IG story poll. You could do a Facebook poll. You could email your list and say, hey, reply back and tell me out of these three, which one do you think you would find the most value with? So that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is just look for the low-hanging fruit, which means which course would be the easiest for you to create right away. 
And I know we're going to talk about types of courses in a moment, which kind of connects with that. But if you look at these three and you think, wow, that one's going to take me a while and I've got to do some research and, and I know I'm really going to have to drill down into a lot of content, but this one, I could teach it in my sleep. This one's easy. I could bust it out in a week or so. I mean, it won't happen that way, but if you're feeling that way, go with that one. So as the course creator, choose the one that would be easiest for you to create, but also, you know, your audience wants it. Yeah. And I think that's great advice. And that way you at least jumpstart things because I know a lot of people, we need to have a little bit of success and that then helps us to move forward. But you hinted at where we're going next, which is course types. Yes. And now last time that, that we, that I was an ambassador in DCA, you talked about three different kinds of courses. Now you're talking about five different types of courses. What are the five kinds of courses? Yes. So When I put out the three different types of profitable digital courses, they were, um, and I'll go through them really quickly, but they were the courses that my students could create with confidence that they were going to be profitable with their audience after they did a short assessment to kind of figure out which type was best for their business. But over the last year, I've been paying really close attention to my students, what they need, what they want, and really what will fire them up and get them going to the finish line. And I discovered two different types of courses. And I'll I'll walk you through the five really quickly. And this first one is brand new. I've seen it done. I've done it myself. And I've never taught it before, but this is the first time inside my own program that I'm going to teach it. And it's called the workshop course. And the workshop course is that quick hit of cash injection for you, the course creator, but also it addresses an instant or it addresses, addresses a very current struggle of your ideal customer avatar that's keeping them stuck from actually doing bigger work with you. So let me give you an example. Sarah Jane Case has a really great Instagram channel called Enneagram and Coffee. And she just started it, I think earlier this year, she already has hundreds of thousands of followers because it's a hot topic. And she teaches people all about the Enneagram, which is a personality assessment. And so she decided, you know, I've got a membership site. I I want people to go enjoy my membership site. But one thing that is keeping them stuck is really figuring out which of the Enneagram type is a good fit for them. Like, which one are they? You know, there's, what is there? One through eight, I think. So Uh, I I have some idea, but I I think I've taken it, but I don't remember. I'm a two. I know I'm a two. I'm a helper. So people were getting stuck there. So she said, I'm going to do a workshop course and just teach them how to get unstuck so that they then want to dive in even deeper with me. So this workshop course is a quick hit. And this is brand new that I've never taught before, but I know it's a great way for my students to get their feet wet if they're not ready to create a full blown out course, but they still want to make some money. They want to launch it. They want to get it out there. So that's a workshop course. Yeah. And one of our mutual friends, James Wedmore, just did that this too. Yes. He did like a a workshop over a weekend about nail your niche and he did it for different reasons. He was trying to prepare people for his bigger course because he knew that people saying, well, I don't really know what my niche is. That was something that was stopping them. So I think a workshop is great for that too. Yeah, it was stopping them. It was a current struggle that was stopping them from doing bigger work with James. Yep. So he he just like, it's almost like you want to just knock out this one struggle so that they can keep going deeper with you. So that's the workshop course. And then the next type of course is a starter course. And this is where most of my students begin their course creation journey. And this is where I began my course creation journey, where a starter course is you are helping your students just get started in one area. So for me, back in the day, I was known for Facebook marketing. So I had a course called FB Influence, Facebook Influence, where I help people get started with Facebook. It was $97 and it basically gave you the lay of the land with Facebook marketing. It wasn't going to make you millions. It wasn't going to dive deep into Facebook ads. It was just going to get you started. And so a starter course is great for the course creator that's never created a course before and also great for students. And the low price point is low barrier. So people will buy it. So that's the one that typically is the most, most popular with my new students creating courses. 
The next one is a spotlight course. So this is one where you take one topic that you know really well and you go deep. So to to kind of play off the Facebook marketing, just getting started as a starter course, once I created that, my students said, we love this, but we really want to dive into Facebook ads, not just Facebook general, but Facebook ads. Can you create a course on that? So the next thing I did was create a Facebook ads course where I took a deep dive into one topic. You typically can charge more for that because it's very specialized. So anywhere between $200 to $500 typically is the start, the spotlight course. So you can give or take a little bit, but that's typically what I see. So you go really deep with one area of your expertise. And then the next course is the signature course. I say this one is the Mac Daddy of all digital courses. This is the one you want to aspire to, but you typically don't start with this one. So a signature course is the entire transformation from start to finish. So to give you an example of this, one of my favorite students, I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but she is, Lauren Messiah. She is. She was a stylist. So uh, she lived in LA and she styled um, people in terms of, let's say they had a big event they were going to or they wanted a new wardrobe. And so she would take her racks of clothes and haul them all over LA and she would work with clients one-on-one and she was so burned out. That's when typically people want to move to digital courses when they no longer want to trade time for dollars and they're fully burned out with doing the one-on-one work, which is why I got into courses as well. So I can relate. So Lauren said, Amy, I, I was done with that world. So she wanted to create a course to teach people how to style themselves. And her business partner said, that's not going to work. You know, we work one-on-one with people. One-on-one does not translate into a digital course. A common misbelief that most people have that they can't take the one-on-one work and move it into a course. Oh yes, you can. I've seen it done hundreds of times. So Lauren said, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. So she took her process of working one-on-one with clients and she put it into a signature course, A to Z, how to style yourself, clean out your closet, find your style, shop at the stores, how to curate a look, everything. A to Z, how to transform your style and how to become your own stylist. And it sold like hotcakes. It was $997. And she has made hundreds of thousands of dollars with this course from a girl that wasn't too sure she could take her one-on-one business and put it into a course. And now she's built an empire around digital courses and a brand new membership site, which tends to come after you get some some, uh, experience with creating courses. So there's so much you can do, but the starter course definitely is the the big moneymaker. It makes the biggest impact. You said starter. You mean signature is the biggest. Oh, I'm sorry. The signature course. Thank you, Bobby. Now, now, let me actually ask you about those three, the starter, the spotlight, and the signature, because I saw this a lot as an ambassador in DCA. And I think like I like categories, but I saw a lot of people like getting caught up in like, well, is my course a spotlight or is it a signature? I assume that to some extent that, I mean, you don't need to know. I mean, you need to have a sense of what kind of course, but your students shouldn't get worried about putting their course in a particular category. Is that right? Okay. I love that you said this. And this is something that we're going to talk about more and more with my new class of students that are coming into the program later this month, because What's important is that you understand the types of courses you can create. You understand, I often give a lot of success stories and examples. So you kind of start thinking about what you can create. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's called Himajiga course or <laughs> Signature course. I made it hard, obviously. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, you're not telling your students, this is a starter course. It's all internal. It's just to wrap your head around oh, where do I want to start the conversation? Or how deep do I want to go? It's all internal stuff. At the end of the day, it does not matter internally what you call it. Yeah, I mean, it gives you some sense. So for example, I think a spotlight course versus a signature course. A signature course will cover more ground, but actually likely doesn't go as deep as a spotlight course. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. It's a little bit more surface, but also allows people to feel like this is doable. I I have some momentum. Right. And so, I mean, I think it's important for people to understand, to think through what kind of course, to understand how deep they should go, but don't get hung up. Now, you also said like a lot of your students start with a starter course, but I also saw this question a lot in your DCA group the last time around 
can someone, could someone make a signature course their first course? Could someone make their a signature course for, yes, they definitely yeah. can. But let me talk about that with okay. just a small caveat. If you're going to start with a signature course, you just want to make sure you have a good sense of what your audience wants and you have at least 250 people on your email list and you're willing to grow. I teach all my students how to grow their email list. So when they launch, they have people that are ready to buy. So I always cover that when I work with people to create courses, but you at least want that foundation. And also you want to have a clear understanding of your roadmap. A signature course often involves a roadmap. Here's all the steps you take to get from point A to point B and get a really big transformation. If you've had a transformation for yourself or for your clients, by all means, you could start with the signature course. Yeah. And I'll give an example. So someone we both know in the industry, uh, Emily Hirsch, she runs a, a Facebook ads. I guess she now calls it a marketing agency. And she just launched a course and it's the only course she has for sale, but it's a signature course. But that's because she's been doing this as a service provider and she could basically take her process that she was doing with her clients and offer it as a course. So that's the kind of place where I think you can go straight to a signature course and that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Okay. Now I, I want to talk about one last topic before we wrap up, which Time is out. actually, yes, I, I steered you wrong because, or I steered you off because I have to tell the last type of course. Cause oh, that's right. yes, go ahead. The certification course. And the reason why I don't get deep into this one is because I don't teach it. So okay. a certification course is a course you put together where typically it takes people six to 12 months to get through. And you are literally offering them a certification to then go and teach what you taught or use your model of teaching for other people. Typically it's $10,000, $20,000 a pop. And so this is way more advanced and in-depth. And that's not the type of course I, I teach people, but it is a profit type of course, you're usually in business for five to 10 years before you ever even venture out to a certification course. Yeah. That's like, like Brooke Castillo has one of those, right? Exactly. $18,000 takes a year to go through. You're a certified life coach. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, that is a different kind. So I'm glad you stopped me to go there, but we can pass that on because neither one of us really is going to help people do that. But one of the things I love about the way you talk about this is you don't talk about creating a digital course or an online course. You talk about creating a digital course business. Can you talk about like, what's the difference and why do you focus on the idea of a digital course business instead of just talking about how to create a course? Oh, I love this topic. So if you want to create a course and add it to your suite of products and offerings inside your business. Definitely you can do that and it can definitely be profitable. So it is an option, but I want to encourage you to think bigger and think more long-term. And when you think bigger and more long-term, creating a digital course business means that the bulk of your revenue comes from one or two digital courses that you've created and you've refined over time and you've launched them over and over again. Typically, I I encourage my students to start with a live launch about twice or three times and then move into evergreen, which means everything is in automation, which is the holy grail. And I highly recommend it and teach my students how to do so. And so if you have one or two courses, which I have two courses in my business. So this year we're likely going to hit $10 million in revenue. And I have two digital courses, which are the bulk of my revenue. If I hit 10 million, the bulk of that revenue came from two digital courses. Now I've been in business 10 years, so I'm not looking, I'm not having you look for big numbers like that right out of the get go. But I tell you that to say, you can build a business where you have a few digital courses that you sell over and over again to create consistent revenue, which means you then get to only say yes to the things that fully light you up and you get to say no to the things that drain you. So let me give you an example. I don't technically love to travel all over the world and speak on stages. I used to do it in my, in, in my former life and it was great then, but I don't want to do that now. I'm a homebody. I like to be at home with my husband and my dog and my son. And that's the kind of lifestyle I love. I like routine. I like waking up. I like walking the dog. I just like it. So I know what I like and I don't want to be on planes all the time. So when I'm asked to speak, I usually say no. And when I do say yes, I get paid a premium. 
And so I get to choose that because my digital courses are bringing in the revenue that I want. So everything else becomes icing on the cake. The the freedom that you can create in your life and in your business when you have a digital course means that you are only doing the things that you absolutely love. That's a digital course business. That's very different than a one-off course that maybe you sell once or twice and then you go on to the next spinning plate. I don't have a lot of spinning plates in my business. I have a very simple business and that's what has created so much revenue and happiness for me. And that's why I'm a huge advocate of a digital course business model. (laughs) You know, we've come almost full circle. You probably don't remember this, but what we talked about in episode 23 was keeping your business simple and your simple business model. So So I'm such an advocate. Yes. And and I mean, I agree with it, uh, with the concept, but I think another important part about it is that you're teaching people that you can't just create a course and expect it to make you money. One of the things that I loved that you said over and over during DCA, and I'm going to butcher the quote here, but you basically said, you know, the success of your business comes from what you do between the times that you're launching your course. Amen. I love that you brought that up. And can you explain, and to me, that's part of building the business, right? And and can you explain what you mean by that? Yes. So when you launch a digital course, typically I teach my students, it's about a two week or 14 days, all the way, maybe down to seven days where you're actually selling your course. And then typically I tell my students, we close up shop, which means cart close. And then a few months later, you will sell it again. It creates a lot of scarcity and urgency, and it makes you really position yourself as an elite course creator that you can't always get my stuff. Now that's one way to do it. There's a bunch of different ways I talk about, but because Because of that, you're not constantly launching and constantly selling. The most important work you do is between your launches, which means you're showing up every single week. You're either blogging or podcasting or putting up a video on your blog. You're showing up on live video. You're doing social media. How you show up and add value between the times that you're selling is what matters in terms of what the impact's going to look like when you are selling. So the reason why I can sell thousands and thousands of courses in seven days is because I've been showing up for months and months and months offering value like Bobby and I are doing on this podcast. And so the work you do between the launches, showing up, creating content, offering value, connecting, engaging, That's the most important work you can do in your business. And quite honestly, that's the most fun stuff you can do as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I I won't go into details, but I know you talked about like in your last launch, most people, I think, in the internet space would have been shocked by how small, for example, your ads budget was compared to the size of your launch. Yes. And that had to do with the fact that you had spent, I mean, years basically cultivating a following and so you open the cart and or you open the doors and you basically had people stampeding through saying, I want this. It's so true. And it still surprises me to this day because you're not expecting like, holy cow, these people love this. You want them to, but it's always fun to feel that right in that moment. And Bobby, you just reminded me, one of my students, Jamie Sears, she's a teacher and she created a course to teach other teachers how to teach writing to their students. The word teach gets in there like 10 times. So it's always hard for me to say that, but she teaches teachers how to teach writing to students. And I bring this up because she cultivated an audience that really loved her and loved her work and respected her. And so for a long time, she was building those relationships. When she decided to create a course, she spent about $10,000 on Facebook ads and made $250,000 with her very first course that was totally accidental because out of nowhere, her husband said, I listened to this podcast with Amy Porterfield. She teaches you how to create courses. Maybe you should turn your stuff into a course. She's like, no, 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 no. That's not right for me. And he's like, give it a try. $250,000 later, she did. But I bring that up because you don't have to spend a bunch of ad money if you have a relationship with your audience. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I, my listeners know these days, I, I pretty much don't, well, I, I shouldn't say pretty much don't. I do not advertise to cold traffic during my launches personally. I know other people do, but I choose not to. And uh, that's because I cultivate my list in between launches, which is my preferred way to do it. Yes, exactly. Now on your podcast, you had Rick Mulready on recently and 
there was something you said that, or I don't remember if you said it or he said it, but I love this. And it was the concept that there really aren't any secrets out there, that building a great business is about doing the basics right. Can you talk about that for just a second? We only have a couple of minutes left, but can you talk about that for a second? Yes. So when when we think about doing the basics right, it means that one, you don't need a lot of fancy strategies in order to make this work. Whether, quite honestly, if we're just talking about Facebook ads or we're talking about course creation or whatever, you don't need a lot of bells and whistles. And I think I'm a really good example of that. Bobby, you're a good example of that where if we just get the basics down, which means that you've got a lead magnet, you have something free to give, that means you're showing up on video, that means that you know who to target and you know who you want to put your content in front of. If we just focus on that and show up consistently in that way, it makes all the difference. I don't do a lot of fancy stuff in my business, but I do the basics well and I do them consistently. And that's what Rick and I were talking about in terms of making it work for you when you don't have a lot of money, when you don't have a big list, but you know the right steps to take to get it to actually start moving forward. Yeah. And what I like to tell people is if you're searching for some ninja marketing tactic that's going to make the difference, you're not going to succeed. You've built a, an amazing business based upon doing the basics. My business is built on doing the basics, and I encourage all my students to do the same. So I love that. Now, I'm going to ask you one last question. And like okay. I told you before we started, <laughs> I'm only asking this the way, literally the way it was written by one of the people in my group who wanted you to ask this. Okay. I wanted to know what tools and or resources Perrin, besides yours, Bobby, <laughs> does Amy recommend for digital entrepreneurs? Yeah, because I do recommend Bobby's resources for digital entrepreneurs. I think what I do and what Bobby does is such a good fit together. So, okay. So if I couldn't name any of Bobby's resources, what else would I name? Okay. So first of all, I love books and I'm an, I'm an audible. Oops, my earbud. Speaking of audible, my earbuds just fell out. <laughs> I love Audible. So I'm constantly filling my mind with great books when I take Scout on his walks in the morning. And one of my favorite books is Story Brand by Donald Miller. And when you know how to tell a story, you can learn how to teach. And so storytelling and teaching go hand in hand. And so that's how I've learned to really weave my content into something that's more interesting and engaging is through the story. So Story Brand, 100% is a great resource, a book to read. And then in addition to that, there's a lot of great software out there, but my students who create a course are freaked out about the software because no one teaches you how to do this in the corporate world or in college or in school or whatever. So when you get out in the online world and you create your first course, you're like, what is this, this software that I have to use? Now, funny enough, the one I recommend is Kajabi. And you might think, what is that word Kajabi? Like <laughs> what, what's going on here? It's K-A-J-A-B-I. But Kajabi is an all-in-one software tool to help you have a place to store all your videos and PDFs and training audios for your course. And the reason I recommend it is it's so simple that you don't need a programmer or a coder. I am not techie at all, but I can set up a platform in Kajabi. And so you could do your email marketing and your opt-in pages and your lead magnets through one piece of software. And my philosophy is let's just keep this simple. We don't need 10 tools to try to figure out. So that's a software I recommend as well. Yeah. So I love that. I don't use Kajabi, but I use one of their competitors that's also all-in-one, same thing. For beginners, I say, find an all-in-one you like and stick with it, and it'll make your life much easier. Exactly. Uh, but thank you, Amy. Now, I did forget to do something. Uh, when we talked about course types, you actually have a quiz that will help people pick the right kind of uh, right type of course. Yes. Type, right? I'm so glad you brought this up. This quiz is so good. I have painstakingly poured over it with, I, I hired someone to help me create the quiz. Her name is Shanti. Shanti and I poured over this to make sure that anyone who takes this quiz will get the outcome that is perfect for their personality, their expertise, and where their business is right now. So you've got to take the quiz. To The, the quiz will help you figure out, should you create a workshop course, a starter course, a spotlight course, a signature course, or a certification course? So if you want to know which one is right for your business, which one will make you money, you've got to take this quiz. Yeah. And uh, you can take that by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash 
Porterfield quiz and it'll take you over to the right page. And by the way, Shanti is the quiz guru. So of course, Amy goes to- I brought out the big guns. Yeah, you always do. (laughs) uh, Amy, thank you so much for your time. It has been a pleasure and thank you for, for providing so much value to my audience. Thank you, Bobby. I just love working with you. Thanks for being an ambassador inside Digital Course Academy and thanks for all you do. All right, listeners, that's it for this week's episode of the Online Genius Podcast. Get those two resources. Go to youronlinegenius.com forward slash Porterfield quiz to to figure out the right type of course for you. And then go to youronlinegenius.com forward slash starter kit to get the starter kit and you'll get all of the great information. Now, those links are going to be in the show notes so you can get it there. But that's it for this week. I'll see you again next week for another episode of the Online Genius Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Online Genius Podcast. Make sure to tune in next week for more great tips, tricks, and strategies to help you build and protect your online genius.